I don't need to get into the exceptional young coaching of Eric Spolstra, the leadership from the first, from the one of the top two organizations in the sport in the Miami Heat, from Mickey Harrison to Pat Riley on down, the Andy Ellsberg and all of those guys. They know what they're doing. Here's all I need to say, and I hope that Dwayne Wade is listening because you talk to some people and you get the sense that he feels like he has something to prove. Mm-hmm. Dwayne Wade has nothing to prove. Last night, he simply reminded everybody that when he is remotely healthy, you understand, this is what he can do. This is an average night for a healthy, for a rem- yep. I'm talking about a 75% Dwayne Wade, 24 points, 10 assists. That's an average night in terms of impact, not necessarily numbers. Dwayne Wade is a superstar. And when he is healthy, there's nothing anybody can do. Agreed. There's just nothing anybody can do. Yep. There's, there's nothing to talk about. He's healthy. The finals will be in South Beach. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so will we. <laughs> and that's just the way it is, Skip. There's <laughs> nothing you can do with Miami when Dwayne Wade is on his game because LeBron is on another planet. But Dwayne Wade, you know, he's on one of those elite planets. I can tell you that much because yep. he's just a bad boy when healthy. Period. The Indiana Pacers are officially in trouble right now. Yes, they are. After last night. And I said yesterday, Dwayne Wade, and I hate to put this on him, has to now pick his spots in his career with his bad knee that's not going to get much better. And I thought he would pick that spot last night. You also did. And did he ever pick it? And you know what's funny about it? I thought overall he didn't play great. I thought he played some sloppy basketball, a little undisciplined occasionally, some sloppy passes and turnovers. If Birdman could actually catch the ball in the post, he would be lethal in the post. But my point is, when it was time to pick a spot, even in the game, when it got a little closer, who made the big hoops? It was always Dwayne Wade. He was always in the right place at the right time, getting the big rebound, making the big bucket. Uh, that fallaway shot from the free throw line, I'm not sure he called glass on that one, but it was a killer hoop yes. that he made, right? right. You know which one yes. I mean. Yeah, to turn around over but, Russell Westbrook. Yeah, yeah, but the point is, when, when Bosch comes to play like that, D. Wade and LeBron, Miami, I'm sorry, Indiana can't deal with that. I'm sorry. Well, 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 well they can deal with it from this perspective, Skip. Indiana can D up anybody. Even with a healthy Dwayne Wade, it's a seven-game series in my mind. The difference is a healthy D. Wade in a game seven is going to elevate to levels unknown by the Indiana Pacers. And that's the difference. And so because of that, you would give them the edge. I'm not trying to dismiss Indiana from the perspective that it wouldn't be a challenge, that they'll just get obliterated. That's not going to happen. They're too gifted. They're too talented. And I think the acquisition of Evan Turner helps them. It does not hurt them. But we'll talk about that later. I disagree uh, with that. I got you. But I'm just saying that... Dwayne Wade, here's the problem that people don't appreciate by Dwayne Wade. His basketball intellect is off the charts. The man knows where to be. He knows what plays to make. He just finds a way to do things efficiently. It's a mistake to look at Dwayne Wade and to judge him and his greatness strictly by his talent. He's smarter than 95% of the dudes he's on a court with every night. Yep. He just is. And he just knows what the, the lanes, you know, overplaying some lanes, playing under picks and other lanes, you know, stripping dudes, going, you know, cut, cuts to the basket. I mean, just every everything that he does, you just watch him, watch other guys. And if you are a kid out there and you're studying to look at his jump shot, his fall away, Jay, how smooth he runs, how he changed pace. He says, that's a mistake. You have to watch this man play the game cerebrally. Mm -hmm. And then you understand why Dwayne Wade can survive. Got to remember, playoff time, there are no Mm back-to-backs. See, he struggles now because it's those back-to-back nights and the travel. Well, guess what? You got two consecutive games at home. And then you got three consecutive games on the road. And none of them are back-to-backs. So if you're able to rest and mess with your knee or whatever, Mm -hmm. the objective for him is to get to April, May, and June. That's what this is about. And if that happens, and he looks the way that he looked last night, It's a wrap. And let me remind you, 
it's no done deal that that game seven is going to be in Indiana. That's true. Because all of a sudden the Pacers are seven and six in their last 13. Miami's coming off a long road trip, going home for a home stand. What is it down to now? Game mm -hmm. and a half? Right. Wow. And I'm going to tell you what, my, my, what Indiana has done real quick. They've leaned on Paul George a little bit too much. Yep. Lance Stevenson can play. Yep. Okay, Roy Hibbert, David West, those boys, they can play. They need to lean on those other guys a bit more heavily, and, and they need to stop spectating offensively because they play collectively defensively, and they're great. But offensively, they need to stop looking at Paul George to come save the day and saying he's a superstar, we have one. Yes, that's true. He has that potential. Yep. He's there. But... The other guys need to step up, and they need to utilize the talent that they have because they will need it to beat the Heat if Dwayne Wade is healthy.